Hello, my name is Ishal Abdul Halain. Welcome to this video on the Peripheral Interface Controller. We will look at the PIC16F877A microcontroller chip focusing on the fundamentals of its registers and how they are configured. The PIC16F877A is categorized as a microcontroller integrated circuit manufactured by a company called Microchip Technology. It is an 8-bit microcontroller operating at 20 MHz. 33 from its 40 pins are programmable I.O. pins. Port A is 6 bits on pins 2 to 7. Port B is 8 bits on pins 33 to 40. Port C is 8 bits on pins 15 to 18 and on pins 23 to 26. Port D is 8 bits on pins 19 to 22 and on pins 27 to 30. Port E is 3 bits on pins 8 to 10. This gives us a total of 33 pins on 5 ports. The machine is a reduced instruction set computer with only 35 low-level instructions. It also features an 8 kilobyte on chip memory module dedicated to store programs written for interfacing. The concept of memory mapping is fundamental knowledge that explains why interfacing is possible. In order to understand memory mapping, let's have a look at the register file. It is a block of addressable registers made from static RAM cells for controlling on chip peripherals and it works like memory. On the other hand, the register file map is a document that maps the registers in the register file to its addresses. There are four banks in the file register, named Bank 0, Bank 1, Bank 2, and Bank 3. Bank 0 holds registers at addresses between 0 and 7F, 128 bytes of addresses in total. Bank 1 holds registers at addresses between 80 and FF, 128 bytes. Bank 2 holds registers at addresses between 100 and 17F, also 128 bytes and Bank 3 holds registers at addresses between 180 to 1FF, also 128 bytes. The total is 512 addresses that is all 8 bits wide. The banks are composed of several types of registers and the first type are the special function registers. It is made using static RAM technology or SRAM for short. Here is the SRAM cell schematic showing two cross-coupled inverters connected through two identical switches. One SRAM cell can store a logic 1 or 0. Yes. It can be programmed. If we connect 8 SRAM cells together, we basically have an 8-bit register that is super fast. Anyway, 4096 of these high-speed SRAM cells are used to make the register file circuit. The special function register is used by the CPU and peripheral modules to control the microcontroller's operation. Programmers use it for their interfacing projects. The next type of register are the general purpose registers. All of them are assigned a unique address and can be used to store data or perform ALU operations in them. The third type is the indirect registers. They are only four of them located at the lowest address in each bank. Next, we have the access registers situated at the lowest 15 bytes in banks 1, 2 and 3. In bank 3, we have another type, called the reserved registers. The final type is the unassigned registers that you see occupying the spaces here in banks 1, 2 and 3. Now that we have the register file cleared, we can discuss memory map. Let's concentrate on bank 0. Here are the names of all of the registers it has. Each register is associated with an address, just like memory. You control a specific peripheral to act in a certain way by writing data to the register connected to it. Let's take port B as an example. To access it, you will have to be in bank 0, then you would select address 06 which points to port B. In the chip, port B is attached to an 8-bit bidirectional I.O. circuit made from 8 parallel tri-state logic gates. If you want to use a register in another bank, you will have to switch banks first. For example, we just accessed port B from bank 0, and now we want to access tris B in bank 1. We will have to switch to bank 1 first, then specify the address of register tris B, which is 86. This is the essence of memory mapping that is a method of assigning each on-chip peripherals with a unique address through the register file circuit. Note that some registers exist in more than one bank like the status register. Thus it has four addresses. The register file block is intentionally designed this way to minimize bank switching so programs can execute faster. Before I forget, Tris B is a data direction register for port B and is used to control whether port B is an input or output. 
Electris B and port B are registers that control a bi-directional I.O. circuit. We will explain the circuit next for you to better understand Tris B and port B. A tri-state buffer is shown here. It has an active low enable pin that when activated, causes the value at the input to propagate to the output. How can we interchange the input and output so we have a bi-directional I.O. circuit? It's easy. We just add another tri-state buffer in parallel but in the opposite direction to the existing gate and connect its enable pin to the output of an inverter. The inverter's input is connected to the enable pin of the top gate. When the enable signal is low, only the top gate is active while the bottom gate is inactive due to the logic 1 output of the inverter. When the enable signal is changed to 1, the inverter output flips to 0 and only the bottom gate is activated. Thus, the input and output ports switch according to the bottom gate. Simple but ingenious. This is the symbol for the bi-directional tri-state buffer circuit. Here is our bi-directional tri-state gate. Let's see how they are arranged and connected to the data direction and port registers, Tris X and Port X, which are the general names for the data direction and bi-directional I.O. port registers. The X can be changed with either A, B, C, D or E to refer to the desired tri-state and port registers. An SRAM cell is connected to the enable pin of our circuit. When it is loaded with a logic 0, the data path is from left to right. When we connect the input to another SRAM cell and load it with 1, the 1 will propagate to the output. Consider another 7 of these bi-directional gates in parallel, each with its enable pin connected to an SRAM cell. Upon loading them all with zeros, the data direction flows from left to right, clearly indicating the input and output sides. In order to drive the output, we just connect SRAM cells to the input side and load them with data. This is how registers Tris B and Port B are connected to pins 33 to 40, which are channel B I.O. pins. If you probe these pins you will read 5 volts at pins 33, 35, 39 and 40. Pins 34, 36, 37 and 38 will register 0 volts when probed. In order to load registers Tris B and Port B with data, we will need to use the status register. It is an 8-bit register with its flags shown at each bit location for your learning pleasure. Bit 0 is the carry bit. Bit 1 is the digital carry bit. Bit 2 is the 0 bit. Bit 3 is the power down bit. Bit 4 is the timer out bit. Bits 5 and 6 are the register bank select bits. It is used to select between the banks in the file register according to this table. To select any of the four banks, you would set bits RP1 and RP0 in the status register accordingly. Finally, we have bit 7 which is the indirect register page bit. Let's look at the register file map document. For our convenience, we will take note that we are using Tris B in bank 1, port B in bank 0, and the status register in banks 0 and 1. We will take note of these registers address and bank location. Now that we have our registers banks and addresses, we are good to go. Another register that we need is the 8-bit working register W. We don't need to know its address to use it. Apart from this working register, all of the other registers are categorized as functional registers. We cannot write data directly into functional registers. This is our Tris B and Port B configuration program. Let's see how it works. Assume that we just turned on our chip, so we are in bank 0. Since Tris B is located in bank 1, we have to switch to bank 1. This is done by writing a 0 and a 1 into bit 6 and 5 of the status register. The first instruction BSF, stands for set bit in functional register. This instruction changes the status register at address 3 in bank 0, bit number 5, to 1. When executed, bit 5 is set. The next instruction BCF, stands for clear bit in functional register. This instruction changes the status register at address 3 in bank 0, bit number 6 to 0. When executed, bit 6 is cleared and we are officially in bank 1. Recall that we cannot write data directly into Tris B as it is a functional register. Instead, we will have to move data into the working register first, then move it into Tris B. The third instruction, move LW is used to move a literal value which I have specified as 0 into register W. Once executed, all of the bits in W are loaded with zeros. The next instruction move WF stands for move value in working register into a functional register. 
This instruction moves the contents of W into Tris B at address 86 in Bank 1. When executed the data in W is copied into Tris B. Now, we have configured all the pins of channel B as output. That was easy. Let's drive some of the pins to 5 volts and some to 0 volts as exactly shown in our previous example. We will use port B for this. Note that port B is in bank 0, thus we need to switch to bank 0 to get to it. The next instruction clears the status register at address 83 in bank 1, bit number 5. Once executed, bit 5 is cleared and we have switched to bank 0 and can now access port B. We will move the operand for port B into the working register first, then copy it into port B. This instruction moves C5 hexadecimal into W. When executed, C5 in binary is loaded into W. The final instruction, move WF, moves this data from W into port B. Execution causes the contents of W to be moved into port B. This is what the channel B pins look like attached to Tris B, port B, and the bidirectional I.O. circuit after configuration. Instead of using assembly language, embedded C would be a good alternative. The statement Tris B equals 0x00 write zeros directly into Tris B and configure the channel B pins as output. The statement port B equals 0xc5 is used to load C5 in binary into port B. This causes the respective output pins of channel B to be driven accordingly. Consider pins B that has input voltages on them as shown and we wish to save it. In C programming, the command Tris B equals 0xff sets the bits in the Tris B register and configures the pins of channel B to be input. This allows the corresponding digital code due to the input voltages to propagate into port B. The command input B equals port B would save port B's data in variable input B. As a summary, we have seen what the register file, register file map, memory map, and special function registers are. The register file is an actual circuit that holds the registers of our chip. Each register is given an address there. The register file map is a document that summarizes the location of registers in the register file block. Memory map is defined as a method where each register is given an address for a program to access. Finally, Special function registers are registers that drive peripherals such as Tris X, Port X, and the status register. Thank you. Have a nice day.